Hello! I'm back with another Affinity Designer tutorial. I was actually working on a basic drawing tutorial, but I realized the art depended on a premium brush pack for textures. To be specific, these fine liner brushes from Artifacts Forge. The tutorial is meant to be beginner friendly, but beginners wouldn't have premium brushes right off the bat. So, as a prelude to that video, I'll demonstrate how vector brushes are made in Designer, then I'll make a brush set that imitates the Artifacts Forge fineliners without downright tracing. This Plague Doctor illustration is drawn with those new brushes. I'll be sharing them for free through a Gumroad link in the description. This is my first set, so there might be some jank, but hey, they're free brushes. If you're gonna skip the video for the download, please leave a like and comment at least. Please. On to the tutorial. When creating a vector brush, you do that in Designer Persona because Pixel Persona creates a raster brush. Go to the brush panel and under this menu button up here, there are three brush types to create. Solid brush, textured intensity brush, and textured image brush. First, the solid brush creates a plain circle brush. That's the only available shape. If you double-click the brush's thumbnail, it opens up the brush editing menu. Brush width sets up the default brush size, while size variance and opacity variance are controlled either by pressure like a drip 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 that'll never stop for pen users, or velocity and velocity inverse for mouse users. These pressure profiles let you fine-tune how the controller affects the stroke. You can choose from the available profiles or make your own by adjusting those nodes on the graph. Next, Textured Intensity Brush is the type in most brush packs and what I'll focus on making later in the video. It requires a black and white image. For demonstration, here's a pattern I made beforehand. If I duplicate this and snap it to the end, it's meant to be seamless. The brush I created with this repeats that pattern, and I can also change the color. This type of brush reads the black and white image as a transparency map. Specifically, a luma map where white is 100% opacity and black is 0%. Shades of grey can be used, of course, for the opacity values in between. In the brush edit menu, it has similar options to the basic brush, but there's more down here for the texture. I can either stretch the texture along the stroke or repeat it as a pattern. There are head and tail options to create caps and corner options for dealing with corners. The third brush type is a textured image brush. It can use colored PNGs and they're still affected by stroke color. This black and white PNG would best show how color affects the brush. Basically, your stroke color affects all the hues, but the image's light and dark values remain. If you set the stroke color to transparent, it uses the original colors from the PNG. I use this brush type for something like this orange tape. In the brush edit menu, this brush type has the same options as a textured intensity brush. I set the head and tail offset so it won't stretch those perforated ends on the tape. So to compare, a textured intensity brush uses a black and white PNG as a luma map for the brush's opacity, while a textured image brush uses a colored PNG if you ever need brushes with fixed colors. For the rest of this video, I'll be making brushes that you can download for that drawing tutorial I'm working on. The canvas size doesn't matter at the moment. Use foresight on how thick you might need your brushes to be, then make your brushes bigger than that, just in case. Starting with the line brushes, I use the pen tool to create a straight horizontal stroke. Then in the stroke panel, adjust the width if needed. On the pressure graph, add some random nodes and pull them up and down. Not too drastic, just some subtle irregularities. I didn't move the endpoints so it can imitate how fineliners leave a blob of ink if you don't move your pen fast enough. 
I copied that and made the version with a flat cap. I simply switched it from rounded cap to butt cap in the stroke panel. This brush is for closed shapes, so the tips seamlessly connect with each other. Another way to draw brushes like these is to start with a long thin rectangle. While the shape is selected, hit convert to curves up here, shortcut is control plus enter. You can now add more nodes with the node tool and manually shift them here and there. Select all of them and click convert to smooth up here. It gives them bezier handles which remove the jaggedness. This method requires more user input but the result looks more organic than the first one. I duplicated that to make a version with rounded caps by using the corner tool on the tips. Then I made a couple of broken line brushes, one for each method. There's the long line, then shorter lines not too far from each other. Now for a stippled pattern brush. With a basic circle brush, I laid down a column of dots. Stippling means shading with dots, so for this brush, the dots should imitate a gradient. From the bottom, the size would go from big to small, while the spacing would go from close to spread out. The dots on the second column are aligned to the spacing in between the first dots. Following the alignment on the first two columns, I manually drew the rest of the pattern. For a pattern brush, the repetition is less noticeable if it's longer. The pattern can be tested by converting it into a symbol, but first I made the blank rectangle as an invisible reference to the brush's border. No fill, no stroke. Then I can group all of these dots with the blank shape. Go to the symbol panel and hit create. Drag that symbol back onto the canvas. Snapping it right next to the first symbol. If some spacing needs adjustment, I only need to edit one symbol while the other symbol auto updates. That's all of the brushes, but they still need to be prepped for export. I place each brush on their own artboards. Even though I said the brushes can be any size you need, there should be no decimal points on the artboards or else the export might give you unintended pixels. Since I'm turning them all into textured intensity brushes, black colors will be transparent while white colors will be solid. So with the rectangle tool, I made a black background behind all of them, then switched the colors of each shape to white. Onto the export persona, all the artboards are listed on the slices panel. I uncheck the artboards that I don't need, then select the ones that I will export. Under the export options, the file format is PNG. That's the only format that designer can make brushes with. Change the matte to black in case your black background misses a pixel of space. You'd have to go over each of the artboards to change this because somehow it doesn't work on a selection of artboards. If that's all good, hit export slices to save them in your preferred folder. Let's go back to the designer persona to add those PNGs to the brushes panel. Under the menu button, create a new category. I named this one Dollar Store Fineliners because even though these are a free download, they're a cheap imitation of Artifacts Forge's fineliners. Then under menu button again, choose textured intensity brush. Select the PNG file. It's instantly listed on the panel, but it still needs adjustments. For this one, I didn't want these round ends to stretch, so I turned them into caps by adjusting the head and tail offsets. Since this is meant for line art, I readjusted the brush width. If I need a thicker variation, the width can always be readjusted on the stroke panel. I tested it on a polygon as well to see how the corners look. Pull corner tends to look good compared to overlap and fold corners. The settings on the rest of the line art brushes are almost similar. They're all textured intensity brushes with a brush size of 15 or 16. They have a pull corner and if needed they have head and tail offsets. The close curve brushes definitely don't need head and tail offsets. When I get these gaps in between their tips, it's usually because the export added a stray pixel of transparency at the edges. I just open the PNG itself on my image browser and crop it from there.
The stipple brush uses the repeat option instead of stretch. If the spacing looks weird, I would have to edit the artboard again, then repeat the export and import process. Sometimes it's hard to tell from the artboard until you import the brush, but this one turned out surprisingly fine. Listing out all the brushes in the set, that's 4 line art brushes, 2 closed curve brushes, and 1 stipple brush. I adjusted these some more before exporting. To export and share them, go to the menu button again and choose export brushes. It will let you save in a file format called .af brushes. Again, I'm sharing this set for free in my Gumroad store. If you have a bit of money, but not enough to buy from Artifacts Forge, consider changing that zero to however much you can spare to support me. Liking and commenting are also free ways to show support. Let me know if you used my set for your own art, or if you made your own brushes because of this tutorial. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye